I met Macho Man last night. I actually had my picture taken with him. He gave me a shirt. He even spoke kindly to me, even though we do disagree on this Hulk Hogan issue. I mean, Macho Man and Richard Dorch in one day is more than any one human being has a right to expect to encounter. You know what I mean? I mean, I am still the goosebumps. You can see them. If you, if you could touch my arm, you could feel them. It is incredible. It's also an Anything Goes Friday on Thursday. Uh, yes, I am going to the big match tonight. I'll, I'll, of course, report to you on that tomorrow. We'll probably hold Mad Dog Merkel up, you know, until we get the wrestling report out of the way. And, of course, we will call in and check with Captain Lou Albano and his um, 900 number. All the usual things uh, after we finish up with Merkel and settle this Mad Dog issue once and for all. So, obviously, on an anything goes kind of day, anything goes, literally. I mean, it doesn't have to be frivolous. It doesn't have to be serious. It doesn't have to be anything outside of something worthwhile putting on the air. With 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., WFLA had a 5.2. WTKN has a 0 0.3. In the next day part, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., WFLA had a 3.4. WTKN, now you're talking. Unfortunately, you're not listening. Had a 0 0.6. In the next day part, which is Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. to midnight. WFLA had a 7.8 in the crucial 25 to 54. If you'll recall, WTKN had a 2.2 in that day part with 12 plus. In the crucial 25 to 54, WTKN, now you're talking, not unfortunately listening, but at a 0 0.4. Overall, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. until midnight, WFLA has, in the crucial 25 to 54 day part, a 5.3. WTKN, now oh, we are in bad shape, as a 0 0.2. I've heard of disasters, guys, but this is incredible. Oh, Barsky, you haven't the vaguest idea what the hell you're doing. This is, a, this is an embarrassment to the industry. This is an embarrassment to the profession. So I'll tell you what, since Oberdorfer doesn't know what he's doing, the snowman is no doubt melting. Frosty the snowman. Hardly Ed is probably back in bed now. Oh, my God, how can I face these people with numbers like this? As well as the rest of the crew over there. The new guy, Rick Simpleton. Hey, you really joined a winner there, Ricky. Hi, Ricky, by the way. I know that you listened. And uh, Eastman and, and all the guys. Oh, and God, how could we ever forget Nancy Don Allen. Now you're talking. You're still not listening, but Nancy and the whole crowd over there need help desperately, desperately. So what I'm going to do as a public service, as a public service, you may call up today on any topic your little heart desires. It isn't anything goes Friday on Thursday. However, you will be required to begin your conversation on the air with something, some kind of a statement about WTKN, now you're not there anymore. Okay? Okay, let me give you the telephone numbers if you want to call them. In Hillsboro, 393-0057. In Pinellas. No, that was the Pinellas number. Ah, what the hell? 292-0057. Or is it I was, I was hoping. I think it's 293. I forget. I was hoping you'd do that. <clears throat> what, give out their numbers? Yes, because I think what you actually should do, Bob, is require that anyone who calls you today first call them. <laughs> no, you cannot speak to Bob I don't, unless I don't think they could have. handle it over there. Well, I don't know if they could. I don't, I don't think they have anybody. Right, right now, their Would phones you? are lit. Mine aren't, but theirs are right now. But, you know, thanks to me. You, uh, you overlooked a couple of minor points, one of which you already know and one of which you may not know, concerning this, this debacle. One is that... Prior to the arrival of Susquehanna Broadcasting, that really makes dinner plates for a living. Uh, and well, they sure as hell don't make radio for a living. You're right about that. They do radio the same as they do dinner plates, flat, dull, and uninteresting. Mm. Uh, prior to their arrival, the people who were, who were soldiering over there had managed in that crucial 25 to 54 day park, uh, 25 to 54 demo, and in the morning drive day park to accomplish 
close to a five share, and almost all of those people were fired, and they all work here now. Yes, yes. And the other thing is, you mentioned that uh, uh, dynamo of talk radio, Art Deneen. Right, even Art Deneen got a 1.7 in this month. Art Deneen, last week, Art Deneen replaced me. Oh, well, I don't think he, nobody could replace you. How could, he, Dick, how could anybody replace you? Ah, but he did. He did do that. So anybody who wants to call Art Deneen, dial area code 513-241-6565. And anybody that wants to call WTKN, now you're talking, they call you. is uh, in Hillsboro, 224-0057, 224-0057. In Pinellas, that number is 393 Zero zero five seven. Now the bell, the bell on that phone might be a little bit rusty, so you know, wait a while uh, to make sure that it's actually ringing there, because it's probably rusty, and you know, it'll take a little while to go. There is a loose. suspicion based upon the ratings that they have been off the air for three months. They could have done better had they shut it off. They could have done much better. Had they people, stood out you know, you know how people are filling out diaries. You know, they forget who they're listening to and why they're listening. People would have probably filled out. I think they did. Unreal. I think Just they did. Unreal. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy than Gordon Obarski. What a Gee, jerk. You, you got something against Obarski? What a jerk. Of course, the problem is that you can't work for Susquehanna for more than two years unless you are a jerk because it's in their employment manual. Hasn't Obarski been there a long time? Oh, he's been there a long time. He's I mean, a real long time. He ran... He Does ran that mean he's a real big jerk? He ran Warm 98 into the ground three times before they sent him down here. You mean Warm 98? Mm, that too. Oh, my God. The, Enjoy the yourself. Same, the same but one? really, folks... Be, be fair. Before you call Bob today, call WTKN and ask for Nancy Donnellan. That's 2-2-4-0-0-5-7 two, zero, zero, in Hillsboro. In Pinellas, the number is 393-0057. Zero, zero, and remember, when you call in here, you must have something, I don't care what, something to say about WTKN, and we'll take it from there. If you would like to do that, it's for James in Largo. James, you're on the air, WFLA. Yes, uh, this, I'm a first-time caller. Great. And uh, ever since that uh, you and uh, uh, ever since you went over to this station, I have not listened to uh, WDTKN at all. Well, it seems show. as though you have a lot of company. Yes. Uh, WPSO, I believe, is Newport Ritchie. Newport Ritchie, what, what a grand and glorious achievement it is to have a 5,000-watt radio station with a tremendous dial position sitting in the middle of a major market and tie a station in Newport Ritchie. Yes. Oh, God, what work those guys have done over there. That's right. Uh, David Fowler also, when he left, uh, I just never listened. I just never listened to uh, WTK at all. There's really no reason to. It is, it is a pathetic... I mean, you know, Aside from professional pettiness, professional ego, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it's a pathetic radio station that is doing this particular format a tremendous amount of damage. This format was up to virtually a 10 share in the market, the two stations combined, yep. six months ago. Now the share is back down to a six, thanks to them. Oh. Uh, well, I really do enjoy your program. Thank you, James. You know, I, I thought, you know, it really was good. Listen. Yeah. Thing, I think you got more fan club members than they, WTK has listeners. <laughs> I'm telling That's you. not terribly far from the truth. <laughs> I really hey, and listening to you yesterday twice in one day with the Macho Man and all that and the Ted Webb show. Oh, uh, that, that, that I, you know, I still got goosebumps, man. Man, I'm telling you, hey, I, I took a nap. I took a nap and I woke up and I listened to your voice. Hey, is it noon o'clock the next day already? You know, twice in one day, too much to listen to you. Well, I did wear my glasses. I figured, you know, Macho Man wouldn't hit a guy wearing glasses, right? You know, so I, but I. But Bob, my picture taken to... everything with Macho oh. Man. Well, listen, one thing I want to suggest, just yeah. sticking around, whatever. Uh, this year for Christmas, maybe with one of your fan club members, you know, a little card has a number. Yeah. Maybe you can draw one number, and the, and the winner can have dinner with you one day for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Anyhow, sure. Bob, I wanted to compliment you again. Yesterday's show, I really enjoyed it. Oh my God, Lionel in Tampa? Hello, Lionel in Tampa. WTKN, now we're stinking. Oh, they're not doing nothing, though. Uh, they're now we're just there. You know who I really feel sorry for? The poor people that have to work there. I mean, these people normally, and, and seriously, tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, not yet, but give me a moment. These people normally at a station have pride in it. 
They want the station to do well. Everybody from the producers, the engineer, the guy who climbs up on the, the, the pole, and I mean everybody. It's awful to work there and get these numbers that are barely... I mean, if these numbers were at all similar to an EEG, you would have pronounced the patient dead. I've never seen anything like it. I literally, to have a 5,000 watt radio station in a market this size with a dynamite dial position, to get numbers like that is, a, 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 a disgrace isn't a strong enough word. Travesty isn't a strong enough word. These people belong the hell out of the business. These, you know, They're ruining it. PLP, the old plop, years ago, when it had David Gold and Drew Hayes and Tim Coles, good, bad, or indifferent, and you, it was terrific. It really was. It was never a terrific radio station, yes, Lionel. It, it was a was. listenable radio yes, station, at least. Was. But it had was a little enough. share of the market and, and was consistent. I don't care about the number. I'm talking about it was, a good, it was a good station. Even when Fowler was there, I used to enjoy that. I used to sit there. I mean, and, and what do they do? I mean, they. I mean, now, the only redeeming thing about it, John Eastman. That's it. I, you know, some of the promos that I hear on there, I don't know how in the hell these people can do it with a straight face. On Saturday, we've got the roving veterinarian. This week's subject, six baths in you. I mean... Well, it's real easy. Those people basically pay to be on. These That's people, how they can do it with a straight face. They are, those people are buying time to be on the radio station. Those people who put them on. I feel about them the same way I feel about you people who put on Freddie Merch. It's like, what the hell did we do wrong? No, oh, no, 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 no. That's TKN Day. I think day. these people, I think that is so sad. You know, we we need competition. You need competition. You people are going to start slack. Don't get a swelled head now. I know you, and you do this. You're the self-styled. You're an eagle. Is this the rabbi again? You know that. Don't let this thing go to your head. Because you people are going to start to slack off. I said slack off now. Be careful. You know, when competition... I told you, don't talk about Mertz. When... <laughs> speaking of jerk off, when competition is at its best, you will do better. You will have to pick up the slack. You will have to, you know... You've got no competition. You can come in and open the phone book, read from the phone book, and people will tune you in. There are us who like out here, who love talk radio. And what the hell do we have? You guys, that's it. I feel very sorry for those people. I feel very sorry, too, for a 40-something-year-old man who gets a kick out of blowing into an ocarina. 42. 42, Lionel. You're 42. You're 42, huh? Let me tell you. I am very sorry. I mean, I think Susquehanna and all those people deserve to go into that studio over there and talk to those employees and apologize. They should apologize to the National Association of Broadcasters. They should apologize to the FCC. They should apologize to the ASBCA. They Why? should apologize. Well, you know, for, for giving it a new bad name to the term dog. I feel very sorry for or those people. Pig. I think it's a trap. Seriously, I think if you're going to yeah, they ought to apologize to the American Hog Growers Association. I mean, what was their what was their motivation in coming over in the first place and buying out the station well, and making everybody leave? Lionel, and Lionel, people, Lionel, what the hell are they doing? Lionel, I think I know the answer to that question. Okay, share it with us. I work for this station. This station is owned by J Corps. JCOR is a notorious firm for doing mischief. I suspect that JCOR set up a dummy corporation named Susquehanna and bought this horrible, horrible excuse for a radio station over there and are deliberately, just to make themselves look good, running that station to the ground. That's what I suspect has happened. I think Randy Michaels is behind this whole damn thing. He's the one that no doubt set up this dummy corporation You've been doing and went to a great that. deal of trouble. I mean, they even make plates to hide the fact. They even make plates to hide the fact that they are just trying to make themselves look good, and I think that's what's really behind all of this. You've been huffing the, the liquid paper again, huh? Thank you, Lionel. Thank you, darling. Say good afternoon, Lionel. He didn't say good afternoon, Lionel. He thinks he's going to get back on again when he doesn't take directions? Forever.
I guess I've been hearing you since you got in time. I think you're an SOB. Oh, thank you, Bill. But probably one of the best I've ever heard in my life. Oh, I've fought with you on the phone. I've, I'm on the radio. I've argued with you. Uh, you. This is a love feast. You've made me think. Uh, when you get on some of my favorite subjects, you're so you're 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 on center. You're on a you're on a hundred. Don't stop now, Bill. But you're calling on a call. We could call you back, so you wouldn't have to spend so much money as long no, as you're going to continue no, on no. visa. No, no. It ain't right. the money, you know. I do want to say one thing, and I'm, I'm sure you might take this as a frivolous comment, but you SOB, you ought to be a politician. You ought to run for office. Too many, too many skeletons in my closet. There ought they to destroy be, there me. Ought to, uh, well, shoot. Would you, should we talk about everybody else? Should we talk about Ronnie? Besides, I can't afford it. <laughs> well, you, you know, I think that the constituency... I don't mean just the radio audience, because other people uh, hear about Bob Lasseter, Mad Dog, you know, and I, you know, I, I do, I agree with you, I resent that guy. Bob. Oh, we're, we're going to get that straightened out tomorrow. He thinks he's coming I, I here really to talk think, about his I campaign. I really think he ought to. Yeah, oh, he's got a big surprise. You know, he, you know he's, uh, he's infringing. But he can't indict me anymore, so, you know. Well, you know, he, 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 all he does if he attacks you is he damages himself. That's, you know, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, well, I don't like I don't like him using your handle. I think that's a fantastic handle. Well, it certainly is, and, I, and we're going to get that straightened out tomorrow. Hey, well, do it. What the hell do you want, Webb? No, nothing. I just came in here to drop off some mail. Just came in here to drop off some mail? Yeah. You have mail for me? No. No, no. I was going to put it back over there in my box over there. You ready to um, to go cover the macho man's backside? Oh, man, I am looking for it. I, I... I am up for this. Yeah, I'm doing this with mixed emotions, Bobby, because you know how I feel about that situation. And especially when he answered last night how he felt about Hulk Hogan. Well, you know, I, I went home and I thought about it, Webb. And, you know, look at it this way. Do you have some friends who are scoundrels? Yeah, I guess we all do. Yeah. And Macho Man is such a cool dude. I like him. He, he's entitled to one jerk of a friend. Sure. I've got friends that are jerks. Sure. You know? Sure. Hey, I was friends with Peter Handy. Yeah. You know, you yeah. were too. Yeah. I mean, hey, I live in his house. Right. So, I mean, you know, who are we to throw stones, right? That's right. That's right. <sighs> I was listening to the eulogy on the way in here, and that is that is sad, isn't it? Ah, oh, now you're talking. Could you please call, though? Please. Could you listen? Could you do something? It's sad. Sad's not the word. I feel for him. I really Sad's do. I, I feel do. for them, too. I really do. Oh, uh, Lynn in Tampa. Lynn, you're on the air to WFLA. Lynn hung up? Oh, the nerve of Lynn. Don in Tampa. Don, you're on the air at WFLA. How are you? Don, doing fine, Don. First time caller. Enjoy your show. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to say something about TKM, but if only... It's if required. Can, but only if I can say Freddie Mertz in the same breath. Well, I don't know. Is Mertz, is, is Mertz a... See, what, you know what Mertz is? He's a plant. He's a plant who was sent to FLA by TKM. I can tell you... Well, no, but, 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 but wait a second. Remember, TKN is a plant. Well, but there, it goes one level above that. Yeah. Now I sound like John LeCare, but it goes one level above that. They are, and in the process, there's some. He's a double agent. He's been sent to spy on you guys. Not only that, take your afternoon slot and drive it down. When the dust all settles, he'll go back to TKN, where he belongs and where he came from, and you guys will remain on top. I don't know what you'll do about the afternoon slot. Maybe you can get Ted to start at 5, and you can go till 4 to uh, uh, ticker tape. It wouldn't be any different. Well, actually, we were kicking around. Uh, you, you were you were on that web this morning, down in the coffee room. We were kicking around the idea of hiring Macho Man to do afternoons. Hey, he's, he's interesting. Hey, uh, yeah. that'd be, that'd be, that's the best idea I've heard all day, guys. I, the way he handled those callers last Shh. night, I was impressed. Magic. Magic. I was impressed. Can, I, can you give me the... the, the Fifteen-second eulogy because I'm not up to speed on that. The the fifteen-second eulogy on what? Well, Ted referred to a eulogy, and I I missed that. Oh uh, well, you see, as a public service, since the the arbitrands are in, and since the people over at TKN, no, these are should. arbitrands, not arbitrands. These are the no, ratings. No, these are arbitrands. These are the trends that you have in front of you. Yeah, uh, they will probably be the ratings, but to keep it legal, these are arbitrands. Arbitron won't be in until tomorrow. Okay. Uh, anyway. Uh, what I did as a public service, the, the people over there keep the ratings from their employees, and many of their employees listen to this show, and the only way they have of finding out what they are 
uh, would be for me to read them. <laughs> and they were tragic. I mean, oh. we're not talking about a bad book. We're not talking about a disaster of a book. WTKN. Now you're talking. Tied for 24th place in the crucial 25 to 54 demographic with radio station WPSO. Oh, my God. Have you ever heard of PSO? No. Either had we, and we're in the business. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you, you two guys do a great job. You, uh, but you got someone sandwiched in the middle that just you, you need to work on. Well, we'll probably work him over this afternoon. Good. Take care. Take, take Macho Man out and let him work him over. Well, I don't, I don't know. He's... I don't know. Do, do, what do you think? Do you think uh, Merce could take... Uh, Take Macho Man. Macho Man. Yeah. I think I think it's worth a shot. Mm. And take take Merch and, and get him King Kong Bundy if he really needs. Maybe him. if Miss Elizabeth helped Macho Man, they could get Merch. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> with those pointed shoes she had on. Thank you, Don. Those pointed those pointed shoes. I I do. Does have a foot fetish? A foot fetish. Yes, he does. He does. Did you see those boots he had on last time? <laughs> and they weren't new. No, they weren't. I mean, I was looking at the heel of those things. Those, those boots have been around. He's been wearing those things for a while. <laughs> He's got to work out to wear boots like that. I was trying to tell people the outfit that he wore up here last night. I, they yeah, I tried to explain it to Mary, too. Okay. You know, red tights. Yeah. Okay, the boots were Kelly green, green. trimmed in yellow and red. Yeah. The shirt was kind of... Um, God, an off-the-wall blue, a screaming off-the-wall blue. I'm glad we got a picture of that last night, because people won't believe this when we tell them about it. We can give them a picture of it, and they can look at it and go, whoa. And I also came away convinced, thoroughly convinced, that that voice has now become his real voice. That's I don't think he can voice. talk any other way. Yeah, that is his voice. I yeah. mean, the, the accent, the whole bit. I just tried to imagine him in a tender moment, maybe proposing. <laughs> I want to marry you because you have beautiful eyes and you're just oh so good. Whoa! Charlie Davis, Doctor Dave Lubin, Doctor Lubin, how you doing? You're on the air, WFL. Hello, Robert. Hi, Dave. You caught me just. Excuse me, I'm finishing my sandwich here. Oh well, that, that's the way we catch Richards all the time too. We're used to it on the station. Okay. Well, actually, I was. I got to tell you, I drove through the fast food place, got a chicken sandwich and fries. She hands me the bag. Rather than me fumbling through the bag, I pointed it. She, she had closed the window, so I went, pointed to the bag, went ketchup. She goes... Wait, wait a second. You're eating fried chicken and no, french no, fries? No, no, I got a barbecued... Barbecue. Barbecue. Okay. With what, fries? With the fries. Wow. Uh, I think you wouldn't want any of your patients to eat like that. No, no of course not. But anyways, to go on, I said ketchup... You know, and she goes, she points to the bag. Yeah. Get back to my office, pulled out a little pack of strawberry jam. So I, you know, she mixed it up with the ketchup. God, life, life's a drag. Now, wait a minute. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I should try it. Wait, hang on. I say it's on Friday. We'll do this if you don't mind. Well, it is anything goes Friday on a Thursday, so. We'll do this on the air right here. Yeah. French fries and strawberry jam. It's like you're, what, prepped old and... What do you mean it's like pretzels Yogurt. and ice cream? Pretzels, pretzels and ice cream. cream are a good combination. Well, let me try this. Wait a minute. Anybody from Philadelphia knows that. This isn't bad. It's not real bad. Anyway, I wanted to say something about... The, oh, a couple, couple questions I wanted to ask. A couple questions, the okay. article in Tampa Bay Magazine. Yeah. You like to dress casually, yet you're the only one with a coat and tie. God, it was hot that night, too. Huh? It was hot and that night, too. And a long sleeve shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you look good. Well, thank you. You look very good. Thank you very much. Speaking of looking good, how Actually, did... we were going out to dinner uh, that night, and that's why I had oh, the coat okay. and tie on after the, the shoot, which I think was June the 8th. We went up and had uh, some dinner. But Ted didn't show up to have his picture taken. Oh, uh, well, Ted was on the air. Uh, that was done about oh. 6 or 7 o'clock at night. Cleveland didn't show up to have his picture taken. Well, when, when the guys uh, from uh, RBQ found out that there were going to be other radio people there, they decided not to come. Oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. Uh, what did what was Elizabeth like? I haven't heard anybody really comment on. Miss Elizabeth is more, if you can believe this, Miss Elizabeth is more beautiful in person. She is one of the most stunning women I have ever been in the you same really room mean with. That. Yes, I do. Sincerely, one of the most stunning women I have ever, ever, ever seen in person. And she looks ten times better in person than she does oh, she looks on the tube. On TV. <laughs> she sure does. Okay, now we have to get down to the to the radio business. Ah, yes, yes, the radio business. To give PKN a real boost, 
And I don't know if it's legal. Jim said it might not be legal. Can you just get a little portable radio and, and put it next to your microphone? And no, that would be illegal. listen to them on, on uh, FLA? No, that would be illegal. It is? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you can't rebroadcast another station signal without their permission. Uh, I thought we might give them a real chance. Well, it would be about the only hope they could get. But, you know, at least one day they'd get some decent mentions in the diaries. It's great listening to you, and, and, I, and it's just, I think you guys are great. I love Dick and, and I love Ted, but... I think it gives you guys, you know, sometimes it's very jealous of the fact that you can get on the air and just bend all your frustration. Most of us don't get a chance to do I mean, I can't walk into an exam room and just start screaming at a patient. Sure you can. Well, sure you it. can. I have done it before. I mean, let your hair down, man. I, get I, loose. I, I don't have much hair to let down. Well, what you got let down. I don't have that much either. It is get down. loose. It is down. Anyways, keep up the good work. Take care, Dave. Talk to you. Like Alan, the sales office answers, uh, wave WTK, and I says, I want to talk to you, not wave to you. And I explained to her what happened, and that was followed by <laughs> well, about five to ten seconds of silence on her end. And she came back and said, he can't do that. And I said, well, it's a done deal. He just did it about two minutes ago. <laughs> he can't do that? Yeah. They said I couldn't do it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> But, no, I have, to, I have to agree with you. I've been in this. I listened to you when you were down in Miami. I used to travel down there quite a bit on business. I'd pick you up when you were down there. And uh, I followed you and, of course, the whole gang that uh, he mentioned earlier when you were at PLP. And I don't know what they're doing. I call it W self-destruct now. It, it, it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. You, you could probably hire a couple of communications majors, junior junior year from USF to run that station, they could probably do a better job by accident than what they're doing by design. Well, the last two times I tuned in, it was the Rick Simpleton show, oh, Driving yeah. Home. He was, the first time he was interviewing a bull semen salesman, and the second time he was getting ready, I, I didn't stick around long enough, he was getting ready to interview Alfred E. Newman's campaign manager. Well, that's, uh... That's definitely news of the day. Oh, it sure is. Right on top of it there. Oh, yeah. I mean, God, with guests like that, we are doomed here. We're doomed. Bob Lester, this is a pre-recorded show. Don't bother dialing the station. Seven minutes after the hour of 1 o'clock. It's a Thursday, July 21st, 1988. It's, um... Uh, it's an anything goes Friday on a Thursday with a proviso. You must start every conversation with some kind of a remark about. Now you're talking on WTKN. Unfortunately, you're not listening. Not much talking. I was going through the ratings during the news break, trying to figure out who did worse. Okay, who did worse than WTKN? Uh, for example, I came up with uh, what the TKN in the 12th plus had a 1.0. Uh, here's one, here's one with a point seven W A M A F M or A M rather, W A M A. Never heard of them either. Let's see who else did they beat? Who else did they beat? Uh la di da la di da 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 Oh, they beat W G U L A M. Uh ta 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 bum 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 Oh they beat W L F F. A.M. Never heard of them either. Uh, they beat W.L.V.U.F.M. Okay. Who else did they beat here? Oh, they beat W.Q.Y.K.A.M. Uh, I didn't even know Q.Y.K. had an A.M. Wow. I learn something every day. Whoa! They beat RBQ! AM. Of course, they're probably running around now telling their employees, hey, we beat WRBQ. And they beat WRXB AM. I think I might have heard of them at one time. I wouldn't want to swear to it. I sure wouldn't bet any money on it. Okay. No, they didn't beat them. Even WXCR beat them. Uh, oh, they beat WDUVFM, whoever the hell they are. Oh, no, they didn't either. I think that back. DUV beat the hell out of them, three to one. Looking in the wrong column. Well, gee, it's just a great day over there. Let's see. Uh, they beat WCATFM. And they beat WKTKFM. 
boy, hey, great book, guys. Congratulations. Oberdorfer, you are you know, Mr. Radio. From now on, we're going to refer to the general manager over there as Mr. Radio. Two lines open, both of them in Pinellas, 461-9352, 461-WFLA. Now, we do have this proviso that you must start the conversation with something about TKN. Don't feel bad if you've never heard of them. You can, you, you can say that. I've never heard of them, or I never listened to them, because you'll be in the majority, and <clears throat> if that's what you think. Jeff in Largo. Jeff, you're on the air, WFLA. Hello, Bob. Hi, Jeff. WTKN, Tampa Bay's answer to Salmon X. Well, I got... I, I think it's one of those products that ends with an X, but I'm not sure that I, I'd want to say Salmon X. <laughs> or, no, it, says it, start, it starts with an X, yeah. Do you remember Abbott and Costello? Do I remember Abbott and Costello? Are they over there now, too? Yeah, you might think. I thought they were dead. Well, most of the people who listen to that station are dead. They had a little bit they did, and it was all surrounded by the Susquehanna Hat Company. The Susquehanna Hat Company? And uh, Lou would be trying to find out the address for the Susquehanna Hat Company, and people would hit him and kick him and scream at him. Maybe that's what they could do with the building. They could turn it into a fedora shop. That's possible. That's possible. Probably get more traffic than they currently have. In the uh, St. Pete Times TV dial, they have a section in the front listed radio. Mm -hmm. It's got the stations listed. Yeah. WPSO is 1500, and it comes out of Pasco. And here's the fun part. It only runs from 6 a.m. to sunset. A day timer? They tied with a day timer? Yeah. Oh, my God. Gee, oh, Oberdorfer, that's fantastic. You tied with a day timer in Pasco. Well, you had the beating WAMA? Yes. That's a uh, Spanish station, and they run from 6 a.m. to sunset. Oh, gee, they didn't beat them by too much. Uh, let's see, they had a 1.0, AMA has a, a .7, so they only beat them by three-tenths of a point. That's probably one diary. How about uh, WLFF? Yeah. That's, uh, well, that's nostalgic, big bands, and they run from 6 a.m. to sunset. Well, they beat another daytime. Jeez. Hey, Overdorfer, you guys are kicking butt there. You, you had them beating WLVU FM. Yeah. What did they do? No, 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 no. I was wrong on uh, on the FM. I think. Uh, let me go back and double check that. I was not the one that I corrected. Uh, I was looking in the wrong column. Uh, LVU, LVU. Fourteen seven. No, they beat LVU. Yeah. Well, that's a Greek station, and that is from. Not by much. That's from sunrise <laughs> to sunset. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> They're powerful against these stations. Uh, I don't know what they could possibly do. I really just do not know, in all sincerity and honestly, honesty, what they could possibly do to recover from this, short of changing format. Well, they could go to 24-hour emergency broadcast system. You know, the old... Uh... Yeah, I, I remember it well. I remember it real, real well. They probably do uh, about as well with that. <laughs> unreal, just unreal. I'm wondering, Bob, you spent a lot of time chatting about wrestling mm -hmm. but i'm wondering why we're not hearing more about the roller derby well the roller you know you just gave me a brilliant idea that's what they could do to bail out of this <laughs> radio roller derby no no nothing but wrestling talk oh. hey now you're wrestling no 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 you come and you listen <laughs> ah yeah and and and, and god when 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 calls were going on too long or something, they could have a referee in the studio who could start counting. One, two, break it, break that call. One, two, three, <laughs> break that call. One, two, three. Oh, it'd be great. This is their only hope. But then you'd have controversy because it might, be, it, it might be a clone of the real referee. Got to get Lou Albano to do the, the morning show. Uh, George the Animal Steel could replace Eastman. <laughs> oh, it'd be great. Great. Ah, oh, God, we're giving them... I, you know they're taping them. Jeez, they're giving them this... All this great... Ah, oh, damn. Now you've gone and done it. Jeff, I've got to get rid of you. Okay. Break this call. One, two, three. He's gone. 990-9352 in Hillsboro. 990-WFLA. One line open that's actually in Pinellas. I don't know why the hell I was giving you the Hillsboro. Number 461-9352. 461-WFLA. Henry in Tampa. Henry, you're on the air. WFLA. Hello? Uh, yes, Henry. Uh, I just came in about four months ago from Skokie, Illinois. Uh-huh. And that WTKN, they need a bunch, they, they need psychiatry work. Psychiatry work? Yeah. Oh, really? Is Ted there? 
Uh, no, he, he left the studio. He's out oh, chasing well, girls or something in the hallway. Well, we were figuring on one of those P, uh, boxes down at the St. Petersburg. Yeah. And after reading the paper this morning, I got an uncle that says there's no way in hell he'll go because they don't have toilets in them. And he, he's a, he, you know, he's a loose box. Wait, wait, they, they don't have toilets in what? In, the, in your VPI boxes. In your VPI boxes? Yeah. Oh, it's a new stadium. Yeah, it's 45000 for the... Uh, each box. Well, what do, you, what do you want to put a toilet in? All you got to do is just, you know, kind of, if you're up that high, all you have to do is just kind of lean over the railing, you know? Yes, but <laughs> he said he'd go if he could... Oh, come on, man, this thing's being built with public funds. Do you want those people to have toilets, too? Well, they're, they're deciding now whether to put toilets in them or not, and the cost is going to be around $500,000. Just to put toilets in. Hey, man, I'd say whip it out, swing it over the top of the uh, rail, and just let it go. <laughs> Ain't going to hit nobody down below you anyway. Yeah, and another thing. Let's have wrestling. Uh, Freddie would do good in Skokie, Illinois. You think so? Yeah. I think he'd be... Funny, you know, I had, rec I had recommended that just yesterday to the general manager. Well, Skokie would be just... I'm not first on the thought of that. Hmm. I don't think he's got a brain one. And you're doing a good job, Bob. Thank you, Henry. Okay. Take care. Bob in Tampa. Bob, you're on the air at WFLA. Bob in Tampa. Yes, sir. Mr. Lassiter. Yes, sir. I have got to defend the station over there that we've been popping. Well, which one's that? TKN. Oh, I thought you were talking about WAMA. No, no, no. Oh. TKN, if I didn't have TKN, let me tell you, my life would be miserable. Your life would be miserable? Right. How, how's that? I work all night. I come home dead tired. Uh-huh. They're paving the damn street behind me. Yeah. The neighbors are running with their lawnmowers. And the kids in a Montessori school, two, three houses away, are raising cane. And yeah. the dogs are barking. Yeah. I turn on John Eastman, man, and that just lulls you to sleep. Hmm. The greatest sleepy pillar is. Well, yeah, how about how about uh, our Art Snowman? Does he put you to sleep, too? Oh, God, yeah. And, you know, a lot of times, if you want an afternoon... We're night, talking today about the relevancy of dining rooms. Uh, <laughs> what do you... How do you feel about that? Uh, do you think that uh, we should have dining rooms? Uh, hey, if you want an afternoon nap, sometimes uh, catch Janet Scala. Oh, oh, the, the star lady. And yeah. for, Sunday, for weekend naps, I've been... Uh, I don't know if I've been able to... Find Tim Cole or not? I haven't heard him lately. No, Tim. Tim's not on in this market anymore. Uh, nobody carries the Sun Radio Network. You know, great I, broadcasting. Uh, I had a tape. Typing. I had a tape of you and Tim together. Mm -hmm. He came. You were on plot then. Yeah. He came groveling, and I'm talking groveling before you and Mary got married. Uh huh. Brought you a bottle of wine. Said all kinds of sweet things to you. Wanting to put out the peace flag. Man, did that ever stink. Yeah, yeah. No, the, it wasn't a bottle of wine. It was a uh, bottle of uh, Mexican liqueur. <laughs> Whatever. The guy was, he was on his belly, man. Well, you know, they, most people grovel in, in the face of greatness. <laughs> True enough. I've had it happen. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Take care. Be good. Off we go to Ludd in Plant City. Oh, my God. All the celebrities are calling today. Ludd, how you doing? How are things up in Plant City? They're fine, Bob. I don't appreciate how you take liberties with that station. I find their station to be wait, invigorating. Wait, wait, you, what have you got on in the background? I don't have anything on in the background. Are you, are you with the barn dance again? I'll tell you, Bob, I don't appreciate your references to me as being some type of a hick. Oh, what do you mean, some kind of a hick? I'm an American citizen and a war veteran. And a listener to this program, and I as such, for my I love you, Lud. And I appreciate the fact that WTKN provides me with a type of programming that meets my needs. Meets and your my needs? Are well, were you thinking about voting for Alfred E. Newman this year? I find that show to be invigorating, exciting. I love at your service. I tape them, and sometimes my brother Merle and I will listen to them back. Well, I don't think you have to tape them. All you have to do is just call them and tell, you, tell them when it would be convenient for you to listen, my and they'll do it then. show on WTKN is Tradio. Tradio? I sold some farm equipment one time on there and got top dollar. <laughs> I don't appreciate you chortling at my review, Mr. Lassiter, well, because you, sir, are a communist. How, how long did it take you to sell the farm equipment on Tradio? 
Well, about six months, but nevertheless, I sold it for top dollar. How long do they keep you on when you called in? Well, I had a hard time getting off. I had to go. I've got a bladder problem, and I said I can't talk. Did they, did they ask you to stick around for the dating show, too? I called that, too. Hell, uh, they asked me to come in and do it. I said, no, I don't have any experience in that type of thing. Yeah, you know, I think what they've been doing is they've been taking the phone numbers that they've been generating on Tradio and calling people on Saturday night for the dating show. I find their programming to be invigorating. Invigorating? I appreciate the fact did they, did that... Did they have another doctor on there, another ur urologist? I have bladder control problems and have seen salt refuse. Not refuge, refuge, I guess. Oh, well, Doc. I enjoy their shows. I think Nancy Dunnellen is a very competent person. I think Ted Webb could learn a few things from her. Well, I thought, uh, wait a second, I thought, I thought Dunnellen did the financial show. Individual as well. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, I wish they would go to more of a health and information type of format. More of a health and information type of I, They're only 24 I hours a day, day like. in the morning, and I hear that. Art Snow, or whatever his name is. Hardly Ed. I don't know who he is. Yeah, Hardly Ed does the morning show. And I noticed... You're talking about the guy that's always begging for calls, right? Mr. Lassner. Yeah. Please be quiet. Oh, okay. I noticed how WFLA has copied WTKN's format in the morning. Well, no, we have more people. No, sir. They were true pioneers. Innovative. They had that call-in news response, which I find to be most enlightening. And I notice how your station, keeping with its copycat way of doing business, stole from them a concept that was heretofore unknown in the radio market. By the way, Lud, do you have anything that you wanted to sell while you were on the air today? Well, I've got a bag of box of Depends for bladder control. I bought them, and I think I've cured it, so mm -hmm. I can, if anybody wants to buy them, okay. they haven't been used. How much do you want for them? They're also good to wax your car with, I found. Yeah, how much do you want for them? Uh, I'll take the best offer. Best offer, okay. Can, could you can, you can even wax your uh, your tractor with them, or or, or use them to to wipe off the the plowshare. You know, Mr. Lassiter, I find that you have indeed done well in ratings. The ratings are not everything in radio. Well, that's that's what, what they say, say over at TKN. The fact that the community here is not sophisticated enough to enjoy the type of programming that they so astutely broadcast is not necessarily indicative of low ratings. In fact, that's merely one way of testing. I find their programming to be excellent, mm -hmm. invigorating. Well, I think you're, the, I think you're the, the target audience, Lud. I knew that was intended as some type of a slur. Well, no, it's not a slur, you Lud. I mean, you know, you're entitled to a radio contempt. station. Mr. Lassiter, you Lud, that's the great contempt. thing about America. Here, a giant, you know, everybody thinks it's such a cold, cruel world. Here, this giant corporation, the plate maker company, has come in and bought a radio station, and they program it specifically for you. Now, that's that's fantastic. This could only happen in America. They care about if this. Was, if this was Russia, Lud, if this was Russia, you'd be in Russia because you're a communist. Don't 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 step on my lines, Lud. If this was Russia, you couldn't have WTKN. They would not allow a broadcast facility to be used to program the one guy out in Plant City. That's what's so great about America. Do you really think that I'm foolish enough to take what you said as anything but a slur against me? A slur against you? Do you think that I am such a so bucolic? So you, bucolic? I, would not I thought you grew strawberries. I didn't, when did you start growing bucolic? My boy Junior had a bucolic when he was a little kid one time. And, Mr. Lester, I don't even know what the hell it means. You are not, you are not contributing in any way whatsoever to programming. You find yourself to be this self-styled genius. And all you are is a blowhard. A, a blowhard? blowhard. Whoa! Mr. Anti religion you hate religion, you hate America. You are what's wrong with this country. And the other day you truly showed your colors when you had the Reverend Dorch on. And I find out that he did a very good job, and you were unable to break through his armor. You, in fact, found yourself sympathetic with him. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll bet a nickel if John Eastman had gotten a hold of Dorch, you would have ripped him in a new you-know-what. He is a fine Mr. Eastman, I noticed. Great interview. I saw that Tampa Bay magazine. And I never saw you before, Mr. Lassiter. 
But I can tell you right now, after having reviewed carefully your picture... Well, uh, wait a second. Wait a second, Lud. Lud, there, there was a mistake. Uh, the pictures for Marvelous Marvin and Lasseter got mixed up. Mr. Lasseter, I know that's not true. Oh, but it is. And how you can sit there and sit in that gondola with all those people. It wasn't easy. I thought the damn thing was going to tip over. Risking their lives as well as yours. But you, you, you noticed who was dead center, you know, front and center, didn't you? And I don't appreciate either, Mr. Lasseter, how you have done this childish game with Mr. Mertz, who is trying his utmost to put together a good product for those of us who appreciate him. What's your brother's name? Merle. Merle. Will you and Merle be taking on extra help uh, for strawberry season out there? We're always looking for a few good men. Okay, I'll leave a note for Mertz. Are you trying to imply that Mr. Murch's days are numbered at your station, Mr. Murch? No, I would have no knowledge of that whatsoever. Why don't you get that homosexual Jacob on there? It's funny how you always have a lot of these people. And I've heard you, best Murch, the good names of some of the finest callers that this station has ever known, particularly Rocky. WTKN appreciates him. Does, does Rocky call TKN? I'm not sure if that fine southern gentleman has or has God, I thought the only person that called TKN was Lionel. I'll tell you something, Mr. Lasseter. One of these days you're going to wake up and when that Arbitrand or Arbitron or whatever the hell that thing's called, you're going to find yourself at the basement. And you're going to sit back in your squeaky chair. Uh, wait uh, wait a second, Lud. I have no intention of going back to work at that station. So that what you just said couldn't happen. They wouldn't take you back if you begged, Mr. Lasseter. You know, they're probably stupid enough that they wouldn't. Those people made you. When you came to this market, you were an unknown. And because of your affiliation with that fine broadcasting giant... Right, sitting there night after night at the end of a dead-end road in the middle of a swamp. ...the benefits. You owe them an apology. And you owe them a debt of gratitude because they, in fact, made you, sir. And it's funny how when people get to be on top of the mountain as you are... You forget from whence you've come. Mr. Lasseter, I'll leave you with one thought. Yes. Take the kazoo, uh -huh. sit on it. Sit on it, it would break. And play us a theme from the sorrow and the pity. Because, How does it go? Sir, why don't you I don't think try? I know that one. How does it go? Why don't you get some axle grease? Just grease, find yeah. out how loud you can really blow, sir. Whoa, I think you're trying God to insult me again. TKN. God bless WPLP, and God bless 50, whatever the 57 a.m., for being the pioneers in this area. No, that's, fact, that's, I'm, I'm going to, to steal a old. line from, from Paul Gonzalez, sir. And it's not 57 a.m., it's 57 and older. Enjoy. And understand, sir, that you, in fact, owe them a debt of gratitude, and how you can come on here and besmirch their good name is absolutely an abomination. I don't appreciate that, Mr. Lasseter. I've got a beautiful... Maybe that's what... The, maybe if they gave the time more often, at least Vanessa would listen to them. Uh, one line available. It is in Pinellas County. The number is 461-9352, 461-WFLA, Orin in Temple Terrace. Orin, you're on the air at WFLA. Good afternoon, Bob. Nah, you're talking, Orin. Uh, I'll tell you what. I listened to them for a little while uh, after your... Mon or I guess during your monologue, and they were they had some post hole digger on from Tufts University who was talking about the uh, the effects of television on your children. <laughs> I thought for a little while about gracing them with the call. And yeah, we're going to do a show tomorrow on the effects of talk radio on the elderly and befuddled. <laughs> which brings to mind the subject of Ludd, you know, which uh, <clears throat> I, I think he's just probably a little bit tired. You know, I mean, it's a long walk all the way around front to kiss his girlfriend all the time. You know how that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it kind of astounds <laughs> <laughs> Or moo, whatever. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it really kind of astounds me that, that how uh, uh, Monongahela, or oh, excuse me, Susquehanna Broadcasting uh, can operate that station obviously at a loss. Apparently they must be in tax trouble. Do you think that's why they're doing it that way? Uh, no, I just think they're stupid. I, I just honestly believe if they thought that they could come into a market and go up against an established talk station that is doing 
controversial, hard-hitting talk and doing it damned well and come in and do what they're doing, that, that's stupidity. Uh-huh. Uh, they obviously do not understand the business, clearly. Well, what about the poor people who are working over there? I mean, uh, well, for, I would imagine they'll remain poor people if they keep working there. Well, obviously, with numbers like they have in this book, they can't go on indefinitely. And, of course, what's going to happen is the jerk that came up with this format is going to end up firing all the people that he brought in to implement it and blaming them for it. Well, you know, it's not that type of format, Bob. It, believe me, it's not unique to TKN. Uh, no, but it's unique in a two-station market. Well, that that may be true. I, w- I was recently down in the oil patch, and they have a station down there by the name of the uh, uh, KLBJ that does exactly that. I mean, they'll do a four-hour talk show. They'll have at least three guests, and they they might do 15 minutes of open phones, and it's you know uh, how to how to uh, germinate your blue bonnet seed. Well, the reason this type of thing happens, or in the, and believe it or not, there is actually a reason. Oh. These people are not broadcasters, okay? They're plate makers. And they run their broadcast stations based upon research. And if you go out and ask someone, what do you want to hear on talk radio, they're going to tell you, we want to hear educational, informed programs. You you can ask them, do you want to hear shows about how to fix your car? And they'll say, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. And these poor suckers went back to the radio station believing their own research. Uh Uh-huh. Which, which is exactly what they're doing on Saturdays, which is, you know, uh, you know Sam Griesball's, uh, you know, How to Fix Your Automobile show. Well, you know, now they're selling shows on the weekends, How to Fix Your Cat, uh, you know, how, to, <laughs> how to Take Care of Your Dentures. <laughs> how to go big over Pinellas County. Oh, real big. <laughs> I mean, come on, even Pinellas County's not listening to it. It's horrible. Well, it's awful. You know, I, I used to listen to them occasionally when David was on in the morning. And, uh, you know, once David punched out of there, or was punched out, let me put it that way, uh, then, you know, I, I think I've probably got a grand total of maybe 15 minutes listening time to them. Sally Jesse saved them. They, if Without her 2.2 at night, they would have been under a 1. Is she the lady who does sports? No, 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 no. But Sally Jesse is the one that answers such exciting questions as, Hello, Sally. How could I be a television star? <laughs> Hello, Sally. Father's Day's coming up. What should I get, Dad? <laughs> Great show. Oh, it's fantastic. Real heavy-hitting stuff like that. Oh, man. Well, when Sally was on this station, she pulled 20s. Over there, she's pulling a 2.2. Oh. Well, I've kind of run out of things here, Bob, so I'll, I'll let you get on with the day, and if I don't get a chance to talk to you, by all means, have a good weekend. You too, Oren. Okay, bye-bye. Anything goes Friday on a Thursday. 990-9352 in Hillsboro, 461-9352 in Parnellas. Glenn in Pinellas Park. Hi, Glenn. You're on the air at WFLA. Now you're talking wieners on WTKN. W- wieners? Yeah, really. You know what they do? They give away this summer survival kit over there. A uh, summer survival? What, what, is, what are the earplugs? Well, you get, you get a work-talking megaphone. Uh, now listen to work-talking megaphone. Now listen, now listen to Sally. I mean, to uh, Nancy from like 5 to 6, you know, before Ted comes on. Okay, then I'll sit back over. Anyway, they give you that. And they give you some suntan lotion. Suntan lotion? It's tough to get you to call, man. And Snow was doing it the other day. Give me no. a suntan. Even with a great topic, he has, he has to give away suntan lotion and, and megaphones. They don't have to give away They don't have to do with, you know, do the radio. And they, they, call, they give you popcorn poppers. <laughs> popcorn poppers? Yeah, and we... They've still given away the pop. They already had six of those to start with, and they, they still haven't given them all away. But the thing is, Bob, they're giving away cons leaders, man. The world, the wheel, the world away. That's big time. Holy cow! That's big time. Well, God, maybe we should think of that. I know it. But you know what? Make those shows. You know, the weekend better. You send your tapes over to them. Neither would make their weekends better to turn the transmitter off. That would do it. But I don't think Sally's there anymore. She isn't. I don't think I have heard her. Uh, I listen easily to the ball games at night, but. Uh, so that, that Sally was going to be their big salvation. That, you know, I'm not sure, though. When I got Sally, I'm that not sure it was going to turn sure. everything around. I'm not really sure. I'm not going to say she's not, but I... I mean, even first James got a four over there at night. And Sally's only got that 2.2. I like you. Did you, did you like him? Well, James is a friend of mine. He, 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 was, he was a nice man over there. I listened to David Fowler because he's gone out and listened, except for listening to Nancy, you know, from 5 to 6. Well, how do radio stations change their call letters, Bob? You try to hide their past. Really? Yes. Really? Mm-hmm.
I never did you know because you know not just TKM, but there's other radio stations. The great thing is, is that all of us in the business think that you guys, you know, have a collar tattooed on your wrist and that you understand it and. So everybody tries to come up with these really great call letters that say something that means absolutely Where do they get nothing. Them from? Just make them up? Well, no. Uh, the FCC maintains a list of unused call letters. Uh, there are certain combinations that you could not get, no matter how hard you tried. Uh, but no, uh, there, there's a, a definite list of call letters that are, that are available. For example, WTKN was used by a station in Pittsburgh until uh, this uh, past winter. And they gave them up. There was another failing talk station in Pittsburgh, WTKN. And as soon as they gave it up, then Seth Brown had jumped on it for ELP because they wanted to hide the past of ELP. And, we, yeah. you know, we, all of us who formerly worked for WTLP, are now very grateful to them for having done that because as bad as TLP was, and at times it was pretty bad, you know, we, we wouldn't want that good name that merged with the what they're doing now. I think it's worse now than it was in the PLD. Oh, it, it is worse than the days of Art Janine and Ed Bush. It's far worse. Well, they at least got a 1.7. What do you think, really, now, in all honesty, this is there, what do you think they would have to do to really, you know, to get up there and to be halfway good? Sell it to a company that knows what the hell they're doing because obviously Chuck Bohanna does not. Do you believe they ever will do that? Well, sitting there with the kind of numbers they've got in between 25 and 54, when you've got a point two, you've got serious trouble. Well, listen, this you've got good. serious trouble. I mean, all you can sell at that point, and I don't really mean this in a terribly derogatory sense, but all you can sell at that point are nursing homes, wheelchair supply houses. Well, listen, well they're going to carry the dolphins this year. They think that's going to help them. They're going to carry the dolphins. Uh-huh. Oh, lots of luck. Well, I just wanted to tell you about their wiener giveaway over there. Well, thank you, Glenn. They're to get listeners. <laughs> okay, well... They still have the popcorn. Yes, they do. Jeez, they only had a Well, they did last them. week anyway. Well, they probably still have four of them left. They started with six. Mm-hmm. Okay, Bob, have a good day. Take care, Glenn. Hey, Bob. Yeah. I enjoyed your show yesterday. You did a really good job. Thank you, sir. I couldn't get in to tell you. Take care. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Nine, 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 nine. You're on here at WFLA. Hello, Bruce. Now you're talking. Now I'm talking. Well, I never listen to WPKN, but their billboard does help me remember where my exit is on the interstate. I've, I've not seen their billboard. Well, they have one. I know they have one. I only know about the one. Is it, it up, up around Pasco County? No, no, it's actually at, at uh, Buffalo. Oh, my God. Incredible. I, I think it is. <laughs> it's someplace that I turn frequently. They should have put it in Pasco County. <laughs> no, I don't go out that far. Well, there's a couple of us, and you know, maybe they've gotten somebody to listen. I suppose. Feel some more of those listeners from WPSO. Well, I have something that's been bothering me. Yeah. Really, really bothering me. And if you can, if you can be relatively serious at the moment. Um, what makes you think I haven't been serious to this point? <laughs> well... Okay, let's see, let me rephrase that. Let me distract you away from the, the trials and tribulations of now you're talking. Uh, this guest that you had on, the, the rabbi, mm-hmm. uh, I, I am left, I'm feeling like I got left hanging. I'm really confused. Um, I, I need to have you explain uh, I, I just don't understand. I mean, the man seems so unreasonable and and rigid and, and, and worse than, than the worst fanatic, Christian-type fanatics I've ever debated with. My friends are just absolutely think it's hilarious that I got left at a loss for words, which I'm not supposed to have a reputation for doing. Well, what, what, what do you want me to do? Uh, you want me to explain, explain the rabbi? <laughs> I don't know either one. Uh, you said something that you, you you promised that you were going to do it Friday, but now Friday is going to be Mad Bill, um, what's his name, Merkel. Right. So you obviously aren't going to do it. You promised to explain about how you felt and and I hope maybe... I'll probably do it one day next week. Uh, I just got up this morning and said, no, no. I thought it was a light show today. I, I just I just got into it today. The, okay. the excitement of being both Dorch and Macho Man on the same day was more than I could say. It kept me awake all night long. Oh, I can just imagine. I still have goosebumps. Still have it. 
Well, I have another solution for WTKN. Yeah. Now, I personally wouldn't do this, but those of us who are boycotting Freddie Merch show could possibly listen to them. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Simpleton? Well, is that is that as bad? Is it is bad? Are, are, there, there's nothing that compares with Simpleton. I mean, Daddy wouldn't compare with Simpleton. Well, I now let's talk to uh, the uh, campaign manager for Alfred E. Newman, then the uh, bull semen salesman will be on right after that. <laughs> then I'll probably have a doctor uh, giving you free advice, and then we'll give away the popcorn makers. Well, I couldn't possibly listen to them because we long ago removed all our knobs uh, on the radio. We can't change the tuning on any of our radios. The only thing we can do is turn them on and off. And they're usually on except between three and six. Well, Diane, I would recommend that what you do in that time slot is what apparently everybody else that doesn't like Merch does, and that's listen to WTFO. Oh, yes, that's the thought. So there's the thought. No, I've actually been using that time to catch up on my reading, so in a way, I should be very thankful to Merch. Okay. Thank you, Diane. Okay, bye-bye. Be good. One line open in Hillsboro, 990 wfla Off we go to Ed in Town and Country. Hello, Ed. You're on here at WFLA. Hi, Bob. Hi. How you doing? Fine, thank you. Uh, I want to I uh, do something. I want to give you four answers to questions that you pick one after I ask you a question. Oh, multiple choice question. Okay. Okay. One, pursue it vigorously. Uh-huh. Two, decent but forget it. Uh-huh. Three, completely without merit. Uh-huh. Or something only a general manager from TKN could appreciate. Are you talking about Miss Elizabeth? No. Oh, I'm talking okay. about, of course, I guess I should preface it with whether or not you'd listen to a tape that I'd taken down to the station. And the question was, what did you think of the song? Oh, uh, which tape is this now? I got a lot of tapes. Uh, there was a Tom Petty on it. Tom Petty. What did I think of the song? I liked it. Did you? Yeah. Oh, well, good. But you, you didn't answer it right. One, two, three, no. Anyways... Second thing I wanted to say. Well, wait, wait, do you think it's something I should pursue or not? Well, I think it's something you should pursue. Yeah. In light of today's industry, okay, what is selling today, uh-huh. which is not necessarily what we'll be selling tomorrow. No. It's not That's commercial. People are looking at. That's right. I don't want to burst your bubble, but you asked me for an honest answer. Well, yeah, I can say. And it has nothing to do with your talent or your ability. It's in light of the market. Well, I, I figure I opened myself up for abuse, but, you know, when I wrote it, I wrote it from the heart, so I figured it must be, you know, if nothing else, I like it, you know? So, anyway. Hey, man, there, there's nothing more important. To, to have the ability to explain to another human being or to show another human being how you see things and how you feel and think about things is an incredible gift that very few of us are gifted with. Well, anyways, I got something else I want to ask you about. What's that? Oh, I, you know, you do a really great job, but you really ought to be ashamed about today. Why? Because, see, you took away the only listeners that TKN has because they're tuning in to you to see what you got to say about TKN. Well, you know, so nine people, big deal. Okay, so I tell you what, I know how it can improve TKN. How's that? Did you like my idea about, you know, wrestling talk? No, nuke it to rubble. Nuke it. It's probably the first time I've ever heard that as a suggestion, but I think there might be some merit in it. <laughs> well, we'll talk to you later, Bob. Be good, Ed. Bye. Turn it into a parking lot. Nuke them. 990-9352 and he'll sign to John and Double Terrace. Hi, John. You're on here. Hello? Oh, I'm so... <clears throat> oh no. John and Double Terrace? Did that tell us? Let's go to Jim and Carol with Jim. You're on the air at WFLA. Yes, Jim. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Listen, I wanted to say I want to... I want some con hot from that other radio station. That's about the only thing that the place is good for. What, what would it be good for? Well, I'm saying that's the only thing that the station is good for. They're giving away free stuff. And well, I was one of the people that won some hot dogs. You won some? Were they good? Yeah, they were pretty good. And how many did you get? Well, you know, I had eight in a pack. Uh-huh, you got eight. What did you have to do to get them? I had to call in. Be the right caller. Be the right caller? Yeah. Oh, what, what, what was the right caller? Number eight. Number eight? Did you hear the other seven? <laughs> See, I, I used to work in radio, and we always used to do wild and crazy things like, be the 73rd caller and you'll win tickets to the rock concert. And we'd take five or six of them and, you know, bam, we'd get tired of it.
seventh caller with the number 73. You're a winner. <laughs> did you hear the other seven? I was, I was number eight, so. But I'm asking, did you hear the other seven? Or, you know, well, what I didn't hear the other seven. I just called in. And uh, right, you know, as soon as they said be the, be the eighth caller, I called in and bam, up. You're the eighth caller. You get the dogs. Didn't get a busy signal or nothing? Nothing. Not another gun. So I said, I'll take it. Hmm. Uh, two things. Yeah. What is your theme? That 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 jazz tune that you play before you come on? It has no name actually. It's uh, just a piece of production music. Really? Yeah, it's just a fifty-second uh, cut. It's not available commercially or publicly. It's just a piece of production music that I stumbled upon and liked. That's sharp. I mean, that's really sharp. It reminds. It, it has to me kind of a Saturday Night Live kind of sound. Maybe no one else agrees with that. What the music make that's the way it sounds to me. I enjoy that music, and so therefore that's why I use it. Yeah, you know, I've always wondered what that was, uh, but uh, I said, well, let me call and ask. Two things. You got the Vanessa, please? Uh, yeah, it's 149. Thank you, Bob. Have a good day. Anytime. For an Anything Goes Friday on a Thursday. Right, Otherwise, yeah. everybody be poor. Right. I, excuse me. Uh, when I state that, I'm talking about a few of the big bankers that are promoting these things. The average man with money doesn't have many more political power than some of them do, but the average uh, man with money doesn't have uh, the political clout that, he, that people think he has. He might in his own little town, but I mean nationwide uh, he likes them. You see, there's so many millionaires today, and I wish there were one, which I'm not, but there's so many millionaires today that just people don't realize that. Well, that was what I wanted to comment on, Bob, and I wanted to... I just thought it was very important, and uh, as I say, I've been telling people for a long time about these things, but it was on the section 19A of the St. Pete Times of yesterday. It goes into quite a detail about it. Okay, thanks, John. All right. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye. I want somebody down in the sales department to monitor that station. I think TK and giving out my talk line. I want you to get somebody on it right now. Or, if they're giving out my talk line, I want the lawyer to call them. And that's not the normal talk. Okay, let's go to uh, Fred in Dunedin. Fred, you're on the air, WFLA. Oh, Bob, how you doing? Oh, great, Fred. Okay, I don't, I don't know who the hell TK in is, so I can't talk about that. Okay. Uh, first, got two things on my mind. I Bob. know you're giving out my phone numbers now. Yeah. Uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, I just want to say that you probably fool most of the people most of the time, but mm-hmm. still a few of us out here that. I'm sure I've known all along that underneath all, underneath all that gruff talk and action that you have, that there's a real pussycat. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think you're a compassionate and intelligent person, regardless of the show you put on otherwise. Mm-hmm. Now, just a little while ago, uh, you gave a fellow a piece of a young fellow a piece of advice. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, you said something to the effect, I don't know exactly how you put it, but I, I think it was probably as good a piece of advice as you could give to anybody at any time. The way I've always described that particular matter is like this. The best thing a person can do for himself or herself is to acquire the ability to express himself. Oh, it's a great gift. And that's exactly what you offered the young man while ago. No, it's not a free gift. It's something. No, that is a great gift. Why? Or you have to work at it. Do what? It's a great gift to those people who have the ability to convey their thoughts or, or how they see things to other people in such a manner that they understand, the other people understand what they're talking about, are, are gifted people. Probably exceeds any other virtue they can have. That's for sure. Okay, so I just wanted to thank you for putting out that sort of advice. Well, thank you, Fred. You will use that or give that advice often. Okay, thanks, Fred. Take care. Okay, Bob. Mike in St. Petersburg. Mike, you're on the air, WFLA. Yeah, I'm talking. Ah, that's for sure. But you're being heard. Hey, that's... Which is more than they can say over the other place. That makes me feel good. I, uh... Now you're talking, but nobody can hear you. Hey, Bob, now don't run down. I've won some great prizes over there. What? Right now I've got a Sunny Land watch on. A Sunny Land watch? It's great. What, what's a sports sunny, watch? A sports a, watch? Yeah, with a timer and a countdown little... That's great. I love it. God, what, what did you have to do to win that? Uh, call. 
Yeah, yeah, the call. Okay, yeah. well, what other, what other things have you won? I've won the popcorn popper, one of the six. Oh, you got one of the popcorn. Does it work? Yeah, it works good. Son of a gun. Great, I'll be a loyal listener until the, their death. What else have you won? I uh, won two free tickets to Tyson and Spinks, right? Yeah, what else have you won? Um, that's, that's about it. Well, that's, that's an incredible. That's a closet full of front, and you don't have any trouble getting in to win these things. No, no, no. It takes me about uh, three minutes. <laughs> God, what, are you, what, what are you? Two minutes and fifty seconds from the phone? That's right. I've got to walk there. God, but, uh, do, you, do, you, do you know what the odds are that one man could win so many? Fr oh, uh, what period of time is this over? Oh, about three weeks. Do you, do you know what the odds are that one guy could win prizes on a radio station three times in three weeks? What a country. Why, it's got to, it's got to be a, a trillion to one. It's Unless it's be. WTKN, and in that case, it's a short thing. <laughs> the next on my list is winning a lottery. And, you know, Mike, Mike, I, I hate to burst your bubble here, my friend, but we're going to have to call a spade a spade. You know, you think that you're a winner. You're yes. not a winner, Mike. You've been bribed. You're right. You could go to jail for this, Mike. <laughs> no, I'm only the bribee, not the briber. Ah, uh, no, no, that, that's okay the first time. The second time, you knew what you were doing. You were accepting bribes. People go to jail for accepting bribes. I better watch it then. Yes, you better. Uh, right now, they've got a uh, man named Dr. Piddle on. Do Dr. Piddle? I swear. I swear. Well, what? He's, he's Another doctor? Dr. Piddle, he's explaining about labels on a uh, product. Good God, oh my, another doctor. Oberdorfer, get rid of the doctors already. <laughs> he's a, they've got a label on these uh, baby walkers that says, do not push baby off the stairs. It may be hazardous to your baby. What, is Dr. Piddle a urologist or a proctologist? I, I heard a uh, blood call in, so he must be a urologist. Oh, my I don't know, what God. is this particular problem? <laughs> I love the station. It's great. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Goodbye. Take care. <laughs> just, Dr. Fiddle. Um, well, yeah, what? Just came up with a message for you. Came up with a message for yeah. me? Yeah. Gordon Obarski's lawyer's down the, in, the, in the lobby. See, he's got a T-shirt on that says, I work for the jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gordon. How you doing? Art. How are you today? Rick? Take care of yourself. Uh, Ed, Ed, how are you? Good. Glad to have all you guys aboard. Lassiter. Hi, this is Mad Dog Bob Lassiter. This is a pre-recorded show. Don't bother dialing the station. Six minutes after the hour, two o'clock. Welcome back. It's a Thursday. It's kind of an anything goes Friday on Thursday because tomorrow at noon I have Bob Merkel in studio to settle the mad dog question once and for all. I suppose we'll just wrestle each other to the floor and whoever is victorious will get to be known as mad dog and the other will have to give it up. Since I know Macho Man, good buddy of mine now, you know. Watch out if I were you, Murky. Anyway, where were we? Yes, welcome back. It is uh, Thursday, June, July. July, that's what it is. That's what the 7 means. July 21st, 1988. One line is available. It's in Pinellas County. It's anything goes. 461-9352, 461-WFLA. And, of course, we get some of our best anything goes calls out of Pinellas County. Ken in Tampa. Ken, you're on the air at WFLA. Hey, Bob, how you doing? Oh, ah, doing great, Ken. Hey, Macho Man's going down. What do you mean he's going down? He's losing his belt. You know everybody's got a price. A million dollar man's going to take it away from him. Ah, oh, come on. Give me a break. That faggot. Oh, come on. Everybody's I mean, you know, if, if, we were talk, if we were talking a great athlete like maybe Andre the Giant or, or perhaps the, well, unfortunately, the, the late Adrian Adonis, uh, then, then I'd say, you know, yeah, yeah I, I think it's possible, but, uh, but uh, not, 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 not old limp-wristed uh, DiBiase. Uh, a couple hundred thousand. I mean, how can you have a champ with a guy who's got a name that people can't say? Because he's rich. He's got money. Oh. He doesn't have that kind of money. Oh, sure he does. No, no. 100,000, Macho Man is going to lay down. Then he's going to buy Elizabeth. Right? Well, well, yeah, there might. There might be some possibility in what you're saying, except there's something that you're forgetting, my friend. 
Who is Macho Man's manager? Virgil. No, Macho Man's manager. Miss Elizabeth. The purest, she? the purest woman on the face of the earth, my she friend. Has a price too. No, 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 no. Missy, there is no price for Miss Elizabeth. Mark my and word. And Miss Elizabeth would not permit. She will be in the corner of the Million Dollar Man next month. Impossible. Impossible. I, re I refuse to hear such talk. I have personally met Miss Elizabeth. I had my picture taken with Miss Elizabeth. She actually spoke to me. She's nobody. She's a little she girl. She spoke to me. She said, what are you doing in here? Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. No, it's not, she's, she was very kind and sweet. She's a, as pure as the driven snow. There's no way. Impossible. Anybody else that you could be talking about. I'll call I you mean, back. even George the Animal Steel, one of my great heroes, a man that I've tried to get on the show for a long, long time. Even he might be, be bought for money, but not Macho Man with Miss Elizabeth at his side. Okay, one more question. You ever yeah. heard of Bruiser Birdie? Sure. Did you realize he just got killed? Yeah, I heard about that. Unbelievable. Stabbed to death by another wrestler. That's it. Win some, lose some. All right, Bob, take, take care. Take care. One line available in Hillsboro, 990-9352-990-WFLA. Ted in Clearwater. Hi, Ted, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Fine. Let me turn that radio down. That would be a good idea. I tried to speak with you yesterday when you had... Uh, Mr. Dorch on. Mm -hmm. 45 minutes, Quick, I had to drop the phone at any event. My question is this. <clears throat> I find it rather curious that this strange metamorphosis takes place. Whenever an evangelist uh, gets caught with his pants down or fingers in the till, you know, all of a sudden, instead of uh, being the sinners who they spoke against all this time, and they were on these pulpits, all of a sudden they are better off for, for being in that position than they were before when they spoke out against the others. Tell me, how does this theological metamorphosis take place? Well, I wouldn't have a vaguest idea. Well, I find it curious. See, yesterday you had a man... You find it that. curious? I, must I mean, hey, if that's the way the guy earns his living, you right. know... I'm I Why think, would you find it curious? Yeah, That's I, all he knows I how to do. You yes, for yesterday's, uh, your attitude towards the man, it was compassionate, to say the least. Okay? But I find it very curious that the man was very proud to tell you that he uh, never spoke out. He never uh, opened his mouth. In other words, he was the evangelical Gordon Liddy. And I find it very admirable. I, I find it, uh, Mr. Liddy very very manly, okay? There was not a question that you posed to Mr. Dorch that he answered. He only gave the questions that he wanted to, and he por portrayed himself as the crumbled man who is sorry, but at the same time, when you asked him about all that money that is left over, he didn't volunteer to give it back, like the New Testament says that go steal no more, return that which you have stolen, go steal no more. Well, you're, you're first of all putting yourself inside of Dorch's head, which I can't do, and I, I therefore have to assume that you can't do either. No, that's why I wanted to speak uh, to him, Dorch. I don't, I don't know, and frankly, I don't care whether or not Dorch is a reformed man or whether or not he will in the future pull the same kind of stunt of given the opportunity to, because basically my feeling is if, if people are foolish enough to swallow this crap the first time, you know, they're going to be just as foolish to swallow it the second time, and, you know, hey, this is America, you're allowed to be stupid. You're allowed to have your money. What I, or give away your money, what I, what I came away with yesterday with Dorch is that he is a, a crushed man, at least for the moment. He may be trying to fight back, uh, his intentions may be good or bad, I'm not inside of his head, I don't know. But I do know that I sat across the table from a man who's, who's down on his luck for the time being, and as simply a human being, it, it suddenly became irrelevant as to whether or not he is truly repentant. It doesn't make any difference. He's crushed. Uh, by me, it's also the same. I can care, you know, it's, it's, uh, I'm not his uh, creator, and neither am I his judge. The question you posed is that you didn't know why he went on the air. And I feel 
that I'm very comfortable in the observation, since I didn't look at his eyes, just listen to his voice, what I had heard is a man who very methodically postulated his own personal picture of what everybody should look at, and poor me, I'm sorry I did this, but... Well, you see, that was one of the dumbest questions I've ever asked anybody. And I didn't realize how dumb it was until you just brought it up again, and suddenly, bam, it, it's, it's right there in front of me. Uh, and I'll tell you why it was a dumb question. I should have known the answer to that. Richard Dorch lives in a different world than you live in. He lives in the same world that people like Morton Downey and Bob Lasseter and Jim Baker and so many other people in this business live in. We are used to talking over the airwaves. We are used to talking to a large number of people. And when that is withdrawn from you, when that is taken away from you, you don't know how else to communicate. Yes, but Mr. Lasseter... And, well, hear, hear me out one second. And while you as a mere mortal could not possibly begin to understand coming on the air and humiliating yourself or, or holding yourself up for public ridicule and scorn, it's all you know, man. It's all you know. Yeah, but you see, there's nothing wrong with the man uh, as far as the man is concerned. The object of this game was that from 169000 plus salary, the man is totally, as far as I'm concerned, unremorseful because none of this money he bothered to return to the people that they swindled. And uh, uh, according to their own tenants... I don't know that they swindled anybody. Well, I think they did. I don't think so. If you con me, eyeball I... to eyeball, you come to me... Well, now, now, wait a second. Yeah. You might consider buying your way into heaven a con, but there are other people who don't. Well... You know, I watched a show this morning. Mm -hmm. Bob Tilden, out of, uh, I think it's Dallas, Texas, his entire pitch is if you give God money, he'll be nice to you. If you don't give God money, he won't be nice to you. Now, if you're stupid Bob, enough to buy that, you know, I don't call that a swindle. Bob, I'm not into Bob Tilden. We're talking about... This chap who was your guest yesterday. Well, I'm sorry, yeah, but it, it's the same thing that Jim and Tammy did. In essence, they weren't quite as blunt about it. Yes, except we're talking so, to that's the not man a swindle. Who was the engineer. Excuse me, Bob. This chap was the engineer, the brains behind the entire thrust, who is currently right now uh, advising local pastors and I understand a local rabbi how to conduct himself evangelically. I find that distasteful. No, I don't think that. I don't believe that's what he's doing at all. I believe the advice he has given are to people who are in in positions of prominence in the public eye well, who I have fallen. Like to hear just how to deal with it. You on the air himself. Pardon? I'd like to hear him say that because the. Well, first that's what thing, he said. Wait a minute. That's where I got the information from. Excuse me. First thing he said yesterday is that. For example, Jewish people came to Heritage USA. I would like to know how many yarmulkes he saw while he was there. I think the man did not tell the truth. What he said was Christians who were formerly of Jewish pers persuasion. I think the man did a total misrepresentation and put his picture of sanctity across like as if he was a saint. The man needs to be... The only way that I know of, according to the tenets of his own faith, is... But, Go but, and return the money to but the... But, Ted, Ted, the yeah. point is that for the time being, oh. this is a crushed man. That's true. And it just, there is so just the utterly no point. the only way to him, Bob, is to give him another shot. Why the hell don't you ask him to wear a hair shirt, job? Ted? Would you like his phone number? I'll, I'll give you his, his office phone number. Call him up and ask him to wear a hair shirt. Bob, yesterday I waited for 45 minutes to ask him the very question that I'm asking you. Well, would you like his office phone number? No. I'd be delighted to give it to you. No, I'd like to do it in public, just like we're doing with you. Right, and that's going to make you a big guy to, to, no. to take somebody who's down on his luck right now and just ripping the shreds. No. no, but I would like to ask him in public to return the money to the very people who thought... Right, Ted, can he do it? Does he, does he have the money, Ted? Is there any indication that he has these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars? Is no. there any indication... So, so it's an impossible situation, but, but you you want to kind of stick it to him, huh? Now that he's down and out, the guy that you used to watch on the television uh, that had all the power happy. that's in the gutter now, now you want to kind of kick him a little bit, huh? Uh, ah, ah, but, ah, take that, George. <laughs> no, mach keine Theater. Don't make a theater out of this. I'd be more than happy to sit down with Mr. George and buy him a dinner. I 
commend you for your compassionate attitude towards that man yesterday, and I commend him for his attitude and a lot of change that took place. But that doesn't alter the fact that until he returns that which he took involuntarily from other people, his scrutiny and his... his I don't know of a penny that he ever took involuntarily. Me. I don't know of a penny that that man ever took involuntarily. If there is evidence to that so fact, I'd love to hear it. At 169000 plus, and the rest of it is in a retirement fund. Uh, I would be very nice if he took that retirement fund and gave it to the local poorhouse over here where are bums that are sleeping on the street. Let that money go there. Well, that, of course, would be the, the idealistic thing to do. It would be the absolute right, proper thing to do. To but I don't think it is reasonable to ask a human being <coughs> to give away his security. You can well, ask, but you can't expect. Let me tell you something. I know of a man who, for the, for the love of his country, allowed himself to be factored from multimillionaire to a penniless man and walked away and said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is a man. Mr. Deutsch is pulling a wool over your eyes, and you were zoomed, partially, but partially you were zoomed. No, I didn't pull the wool over my eyes. I just didn't, I had no desire to sit here Tell and, me and have, have sport. You? May I ask you a question? Why? How is it coincidental that he followed the rabbi? Not coincidental at all. It's just the way it was booked. Ah, okay. You answered my question. Thank you very much. Take care. I answered your question. Um, why, why don't you believe that, that Lud's real? No, I can't be. Why not? You know, because the accent is just terribly phony. What about Rocky? Well, Rocky, too, is a phony problem. No, but no, I'm saying, do you think that Lud could be Rocky? No, I don't think so. Oh, did you ever hear Mr. Uh, Airstream? Lud could be Cleveland Wheeler. Uh, Cleveland Wheeler could be Lud, and Lud could uh, also be Rocky, and, you know... Whoa, uh, that, that is a thought. Do, do you mean Cleveland is... Cleveland, Cleveland who, of is course, is a known talk world. radio junkie. Hi, Cleveland. Maybe uh, maybe you could call up Oberdorfer and give him some advice. Just bad book, man. Bad book. You've probably seen it. But, but do, do you think that... Do you mean to tell me that you think that Wheeler is so... Just just so obsessed with talk radio that he creates all of these characters and calls up all the time? I don't know. But I, I got a feeling... What do you think he's just zooming on us? Definitely. So you, so you think Cleveland Wheeler is Lud? Definitely. Is there anybody else it could possibly be, if you're wrong about Cleveland? Well, I don't know. It could be, but I don't know. How about Jacob? Is Cleveland Wheeler Jacob, too? Well, that could be possible, too. I don't know. But the voice is exactly the same from the... Can I mention the name of the Ford dealer? Sure. Bartow Ford. Bartow Ford. Yeah. Used to use a voice that Cleveland Wheeler yeah. did. Definitely. Just like Lud's. Yep. Never heard of Bartow Ford, but well, that's probably I why. I never until he did the commercial, but... That's him. Mm. Okay. Well, thanks, Paul. Well, can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay. This is anything goes, right? Anything goes. Have you tasted any pizza on the Tampa Bay side? Yeah. And what's good? Uh, Before I die. I've I've tried two. One that was highly recommended to me that I didn't enjoy, and the other that I stumbled upon uh, by mistake. Well, not by mistake. I just st stumbled upon. They deliver, but they don't go very far if you don't live in the immediate neighborhood. Chubby's Pizza. Is Chubby's that that is place on uh, Inter Bay and Gandhi Bayshore. By there, yeah. Inter yeah, just just a little further down from Gandhi. Inter That's Bay and Bayshore. Is on the building. Uh, they got some. You now I I was sent there because they had dynamite sandwiches and cheesesteaks and stuff, and we saw they had pizza, and we said, "Wow, what the hell? Let's let's try their pizza." It's it's different. It's the crust is very chewy to start with, which I enjoy. And the sauce is, it's not overly sweet, but it's sweeter than most. And they're very generous with the cheese, and they're very generous with well, the sausage. Well, you're Jersey, right? Yeah. Okay, it's got to be good then. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it very much, and uh, it's unlike, it's distinctive, okay? You know, there, there was a place over in Pinellas County that I used to love their pizza. Yeah, because I know. It was I distinctive. Uh, Vesuvia's. Uh, Luigi, no. Luigi Vigi's. Well, uh, one. No, well, there, there were two. Uh, Vesuvio's, Vesuvio's, when I was really, it. really, really, when I wanted to pig out on pizza, yeah. uh, Luigi Bee has a Chicago stuffed pizza. Right, and the other one's the thin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Vesuvio's. That's pretty good. You got yeah. good taste, Bob. Well, thank you, Paul. Take care.
Yeah, say hello to Cleveland for me. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Nine nine zero nine three. Could it possibly be? Could he also be Tim Coles? Nine nine zero nine three five two in Hillsboro. Four six one nine three five two in Pinellas. Next time I see his father, Jack Wheeler, I'll ask him. Howard in Tampa. Howard, you're on the air. WFLA. Is this the unbelievable, illustrious, cantankerous, publicly known thespian, a colleague of mine? Well, in the electromagnetic stimulation, the Mad Dog. Well, well, yes, it is. Well, how are you, Bob? I'm it's fine, been Howard. A long time. Oh my God! I haven't. I, where have you been? I don't see you anymore. I don't hear you anymore. Well, uh, my could do my unrelenting support and personal adoration of the new numbers, attesting to your unbelievable popularity in the market. Well, there are very few talk show hosts in the world that can say that they beat their direct competition something like forty to one. It's unbelievable and absolutely. Daggers the mind. Oh, my agent will be so thrilled to hear that. 40 to 1, I beat them. Unbelievable. 40 to 1. But, yeah. Macho Man Savage, I understand you have a close personal relationship with him. Is it true? Well, yes, it is. He's, he's a very good friend. I, 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 I even have pictures of me and Macho Man I could show you. Well, Bob, one of the reasons. And a t shirt that he gave me. Excuse me, I was talking to you, Mike. Excuse me, sir. One of the reasons I was calling was very simply to find out if you could get me a little action, perhaps an appearance. A Why little not? action? I think I think I think maybe you and Mertz would have more in common than. Uh... Don't mention that man's name to me. I want you to know, from personal experience, that Mister Mertz is other than a normal sexual human being. Wait a second, are you trying to say that Mertz is Cleveland Wheeler too? I have no comment. Is this on the air, Bob? Y yes, it is. I resent you professionally for not making me aware of that fact. Tell me, Bob, how is the piccata today? Is it good? Is it lean? Well, I, I, I'm on a diet. I, I'm back on Nutrisystem, and so I, I don't eat those kinds of foods uh, right now. That, of course, brings up my friend Cleveland Wheeler once again. Uh, a pathetic market down there in Tampa Bay, Bob, except for one glittering example, yourself. Well, I agree with that. Absolutely. It's my understanding Cleveland also agrees with it, too. Well, that's, of course, a misdirected opinion on his part. Absolutely, Bob. Well, Bob, I, why, why is it misdirected when he thinks it? I'm sorry, Bob, what was that? Why, why is it misdirected when he thinks that I, I was suggesting that he, too, thought I was the only only thing in the market worthwhile? Uh, Bob, I'm having a little trouble. Diff Could you repeat that, please? W well, no, not really, Howard. Uh, you're just getting so damned old, and, and, you know, I guess you're losing your hearing. Maybe may, 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 maybe your wig slid down over one of your ears, excuse and that's the me, problem, you know? Excuse me, Mr. Lasseter. Mr. Mad Dog, if I may. No, nah, you may not, Mr. Lassiter. Mr. Lassiter. Mr. Lassiter, I will let you know that my show business communication and contact will not be used at your disposal, sir. I just, it's a pleasure speaking to you. I just want to know, I just want to know, and I think the entire Tampa Bay area wants to know, why it is that you lost out to Nancy Donellan for that sports show on TKN. Because we all know that it was down to you and Nancy. Well, Bob, let's look at the facts, shall we? I'm an old man. I've got a pot belly. I'm an attorney. That should tell you enough about my irrepressible, irritating, sandpaper-like personality. Do you know Lionel, the Gulf Ford attorney? Uh, I haven't really been a practicing member of the bar, Bob. But no, no, I can't say I have had the pleasure. Well, I think Lionel's still practicing. He'll get it right one of these days. I see, sir. Well, Bob, I wanted to present to you my support of your outstanding numbers. I don't know that I'd want to take a supporter from you. How do I know where it's been? That's absolutely true, Bob. You all those guys, you know, you've been hanging out in the locker room all that time. I don't know where it's been. I don't like the way this conversation is going, sir. You know, I have heard another young man 
speaking ill foundly of homosexuals, there, I said it, homosexuals, having underwear in his drawers for women. Is this the type of audience that you maintain, Bob? Well, it's not the type of audience I maintain, sir. It's I work with what I have available to me. Again, the piccata. How is it today? Is it lean? Is I, it good? I, I, is I, it salty? I haven't had any. I don't know. I don't think we have piccata in, in Nutrisystem. What is piccata? I don't know. It just sounds good when I say it, Bob. Oh. I don't even know I shouldn't what make it a, is. I shouldn't make a fool of myself and ask them uh, if they have it available. I don't know. Okay. I don't even know if it's something bad that you can eat. Well, thank you, Howard. Thank you, Bob. Take care. Have a good day. All right. Don't hurt yourself on the way out there, Howard. I'm hungry, Howie's. Hungry Howie's? Yeah. I've never tried a Hungry Howie pizza. That's price, too. Yeah? Anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, the Macho Man running from George the Animal. Running from? When, yeah. when did that happen? I was in... Uh, the Sun Dome last year. Oh, now that you mention it, that's the time Macho Man just kind of scooped up Miss Elizabeth on his shoulder and ran out of the auditorium, right? That's right. Yeah, and I should have... Oh, God, I could have asked him about that last night. But, um, I think, uh, the best wrestler person I emulate and, uh, worship is, uh, Honky Tonk Man. <laughs> Another prank call. And, uh, They're giving out my numbers again over at TKN. These are not normal people that are caught. Hockey talk, man, huh? And uh, Peggy Sue is five times the woman Elizabeth will ever be. The slut. Peggy Sue's a slut, sir. No, I think you have to turn around. No, sir. I know personally, Miss Elizabeth. That's Pure as the right driven there. snow. That proves my point right there. What do you mean that proves your point? Macho Man is a fine athlete. Maybe not the athlete that Andre the Giant is. Maybe not the athlete that the late Adrian Adonis was. But a, a pretty damn fair athlete. But if you're talking about this hockey tank, man, the guy's got a beer belly. He's got a beer belly, man. He's a slob. He can't sing. He doesn't look anything like Elvis at all. All he does is walk around hitting people over the head with his guitar. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Sorry you feel that way. Did you call up to talk to Dr. Piddle? No. I, I think you've got the wrong station, man. No, I wanted to talk to John in Tampa. John in Tampa? Oh, I'll bet you did. Yeah. Yeah. Get off my phone, you... Wrestling illiterate, you. Jeff in Clearwater. Jeff, you're on the air WFLA. Bob? Yes, sir. Well, I've accumulated a few things listening to this last array of uh, guests you've had on. Uh-huh. First, that guy talking about Dors, or whatever that guy that worked with Baker was. Yeah. Tell that old guy to get off everybody's back. Can you imagine what he sounds like over at the old country club, bitching about everything all the time? Well, it could be the moose off. And then this guy that thinks Cleveland Wheeler would bother to be listening to this show and doing the Barto Ford. Now, well, I always thought it, it was, would bother uh, me. Cleveland does Cleveland has called the show. I find that hard to believe. No, unless it's not Jack, hard to believe. It's true. Unless his father really is Jack Wheeler. And then... Uh, wait, wait a second. Wait, wait a second. Uh, is Brad James anywhere around? Uh, go ask Brad if he can pull the cart that has Cleveland's call on it to the show. Because I've got a doubting Thomas on the phone. Okay, go ahead. I guarantee he don't call as much as Lud calls, though. He ain't hanging around every day calling. I know that. But that just shows you how diffy some of the people out in this Bay Area are. Hey, I got some other questions for you, though. Yeah? The guy that answers the phone, obviously, he's an old-timer radio man around here because the young kid uh, remembered old WFSO 57. Yeah, he is an old guy that uh, we found uh, just kind of wandering around up and down in front of the station with a rag bag. Well, how long have you been around here, Bob? Do you uh, remember when old, you know, 57 used to be the only source of real rock and roll at one time in the county? Well, I've only been here for three years and it well may be again someday. Well, that's kind of my point. You know, you figure these guys, whoever owns a radio station obviously knows its value. They, they drive everybody out. Then they can lure new people in by saying, hey, you can have a new format or, hey, instead of having to give you some extra cash, salary, 
we're going to let you, you know, design, do all the legwork, et cetera. So at the same time, they're probably depreciating off assets or who knows why. But I guarantee you, I'd be curious to know what WHBO's uh, uh, ratings were. What, what were theirs? Why don't you read those out? Uh, I don't have the stuff in front of me. I think, <laughs> oh, wait a second, wait a second. I think HBO had a 1.5. That's all? Well, yeah. who's the top dog? I mean, who has the most? Talking about mad dogs, who has the who has the highest AM rating in the area? The uh, highest AM rating? Yeah, who WFLA. Has the WFLA did? Yeah, by far. Wow, that's impressive. But now, one one last closing comment then. Who is the real mad dog? Think about it. If Bob Merkel had the guts to try leader, man, that guy's mad for sure. Because now he's cruising around un you know unguarded in Latin uh, Miami. I mean, that guy's... He's Carlos mad. Later? He, he, he was just sentenced, I believe, yesterday. Well, I'm saying, but Bob had the guts to, to try him. I mean, that's being a madman. If Merkel's got the guts to go after guys like that, he truly is indeed a mad dog. Yeah, but Merkel never went after, for example, the likes of Mr. Marbles. Huh? 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 <laughs> Merkel never did an hour with Mr. Marbles. Bob, you know, you're, you're, you're level with us all. The, the largest share is uh, only 5%, so that's still only about 30,000 people, isn't it, at one time? Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, how many people live in the county? million and a half or so? Well, Tampa Tampa metro area, Clearwater, has got to be about a million and a half people by now, isn't there? Uh, no, it's 1.8, actually. Well, that's cool. I guess, I guess 30,000 is impressive. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Bob, you're okay. Have a good day, Bob. Be good. Really impressive, too, when you only have about 2,100 at the other station. Hello, Mr. Lasseter. Yes, Dave. Yes, how you doing today? Fine, thank you. Good. Number one, I want to congratulate you, and I want to ask you an opinion of one thing. Morton Downey Jr. Great showman, a dangerous man. Very dangerous man, is he not? Yes, and he second is. second of all, do you truly dislike Cleveland Wheeler? Do I, I don't know Cleveland Wheeler. You don't know Cleveland Wheeler? No, but what I, what I know of Cleveland Wheeler, yes, I do dislike him very much. You do? Yes, sir. Reason being? Because he's a very rude, arrogant, pompous, mean man who comes across as being everybody's buddy on his morning show, but he's anything but. Well, okay. And there's nobody else in this market that's got the guts to go after him. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Do you think people would have that same opinion of you? Not people that know me. Okay. I'm talking so about people. Saying, oh, I'm talking about people that know Cleveland. People that have worked with him. Say he's a very rude and pompous person. And a very mean man. Good Lord, man! I know Cleveland personally, and I have yet to see a mean bone strike across his body. He just seems to be a pretty good boy from Tennessee. Well, then I don't think you really know him. Really? Really? Huh? Okay. Why? Why though? Um, if you pass that opinion along about Cleveland, mm -hmm. what what about people that pass the same opinion about you? They're entitled to their opinion, just as I'm entitled to mine. Oh, absolutely. I can't argue with that whatsoever. But is there a, is there a different factioning there? What do you mean, is there a different factioning? I don't understand. How can I put it? If, if you think Cleveland is that way... Uh, do you all I have personal experience also, by the way. While I don't know him, I know of things that Cle Cleveland has tried to do to me. You're kidding. Like get me fired. Yeah, you know, little things like that. <laughs> little things like that. Right. You know, Cle Cleveland can sit on his show and poke fun at an entire race of people in a very cruel way, but I can't sit on my show and speak the truth. Well, anybody can sit on the Against show and speak one the truth, individual. Well, uh, Cleveland isn't quite as powerful as he thought he was. Do you do you think the um, the Q Zoo and the folks at Q105 do any good for the Tampa Bay area? Do they do any good for the Tampa Bay area? Yes. I'm sure they've done a great deal of good for the Tampa Bay area. It happens to be a rel relatively damn good radio show. Right. And he happens, to be a, Wheeler, right? he happens to be a consummate professional. I actually enjoy watching him work. Hmm. But as far as the person, your your just your opinion of him is not very high. It's extremely low. Oh Lord! Well, what I was trying to say basically is, um, if people say that about Cleveland, the ones that say that about you, do you think they're rating you in the in the same category? Because I know a lot of people think you're well, very abrasive. Well, yeah, I know a lot of people think I'm very abrasive. They are making a judgment based upon my radio persona. Okay. You know, this is a show. This is a program. It, it's it's 
it's showbiz. We talk frequently about real life, but nonetheless, it's a show. Uh huh. And I am just like I am off the air, except totally different. Except totally. <laughs> okay. Exactly. And, and I know that sounds like a paradox, and it is a paradox, but then I am as well, so it, it's very fitting. It's very apropos. I'll be back. Uh, most people base their feelings about Cleveland Wheeler the same way, from his radio persona, which may or may not be anything like the real man. Uh-huh. Well, like I say, I've, I've met Cleveland on several occasions, and um, he does a lot of business with different people I know, and, and he everyone that I know... Uh, states that he is a fine person and very easy well, to let, talk to and so Well, let on. me qualify it, Tad, okay? Nobody is all good. Nobody is all bad. Absolutely. There are streaks in Cleveland that are not nice. How much of that really is Cleveland, I don't know. But I know that it surfaces. There are streaks in me, too, that I'm sure are not very nice, and they say, surface, you too. Have a mean streak running down your back? I've never tried to get somebody fired. <laughs> have you ever tried to meet with Cleveland Wheeler face to face? Have you ever spoken to yeah, him on he, the phone? No, I've never spoken with him on the phone. Oh, I thought I just heard you say that he had called in. Well, uh, well, that doesn't count. I thought you meant, uh, you know, privately. No. Oh, privately. Where right. Could actually talk yeah, he did to call in about uh, three or four months ago. Yeah. And and you're sure that the the firing was not just rumors or built up anything, right? Positive of it. Positive of it. Yes. Well, that's a real shame. Um, but I do know that, that you express your opinion. You do it very well because you have the power of the media behind you. Um, I certainly hope you try to attack and also attract issues that, that are of as much interest as I have seen on your program. And, again, I'd like to stress the fact that maybe you ought to just give Cleveland Wheeler a call because, in some cases, I believe you two think somewhere along the same lines about certain subjects. And I'll put that in parentheses. <laughs> okay. Subjects. Thank you, David. Thank you. Be good. You... Off we go to George and Tampa. George, you're on the air WFLA. Yes, Bob. I wanted to talk about something, but I want to say something first. That guy who was telling you how good Hungry Howie's pizza is? Yeah. Uh, have you ever been in a Hungry Howie's? Obviously, no, I haven't. Obviously not. Uh, the place is so filthy that you'll have to wear a hairnet when you go in. The customers need to wear hairnets. <laughs> Okay. Okay, and I stole that from the guy I want to complain about. Oh, what's that? What's that? Okay, you, you've talked uh, a lot about Neil Rogers. Well, Neil was very instrumental in my career. Yeah. Well, I, I heard a lot about him, a lot of good things, and I started doing a lot of traveling to Miami back and forth, and I listened to him, and I was in stitches the whole time I was listening to him. I think the guy is brilliant. And, he is. And I really enjoyed the show. The problem I have is every time I go there, every week or two, uh, when I turn on the radio, he's doing the same thing he did the first time I heard him. Uh, you know, I don't know if he if he's losing it, but it's uh, it's you know it's one continuous show. Well, you see, we have two Neil Rogers in this world um, on the radio. We have the Neil Rogers of up to about two years ago, who was a a brilliant flaming liberal uh, with one of the most incredible minds I've ever encountered. Which I can see that. And then we have the new Neil Rogers that I've never heard. Uh, when Neil started on days at INZ AM and then moved over to the FM uh, uh, mornings, I've never heard any of those shows. So I have no idea what Neil is doing. I've been in Miami, I believe, a total of four days, a total of three days. Uh, since Neil switched, two of them were on a weekend when he wasn't on, and the other, I was in there for a uh, job interview at INZ about a year and a half ago, I guess it was. And uh, when I finished with the interview, I went down and sat in the studio with Neil for about a half hour, maybe an hour, I don't know. But you don't hear the show sitting in the studio, so I've never really heard what he's doing. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, when, I, when I go down there, I usually leave around 9 in the morning to come home. Uh-huh. So I'll, I always tape on this little cassette I have. I, I'll always tape 
a couple hours of him. Oh, I'd get a big kick out of that. I'd really enjoy that. Okay. I, I'll probably drop by the tape that I have. It'll bore you to death. I would rather tape a different one when I go down there next week. Oh, great. That'll give me an opportunity to lift things off the tape and use them on my show like he does uh, lifting stuff off of my show and using it down there. Well, I, I hate to tell you, I don't know if you'll be able to get anything. I, I, I did get the hairnet thing from him. He was talking about... Uh, what was that restaurant? Nathan's down there. Oh, That's yes. where he got the customer. Do you still talk about the Rascal House all the time? Uh, he hasn't lately. The first time I, I got, I listened to him, he was uh, bashing uh, the political structure down there and the old people. And it was great. It's, it was just so funny, the way he did it. But, uh, and then he has some pre-recorded stuff. But the last four or five times I listened to him, um, well, it'll all be new to me. I'd, I'd really appreciate it. I'd, I'd get a big kick out of that. Okay. Well, you'll, you'll get it. You well, thank you. Thank you very much, George. Okay. Take it easy. Bye. Be good. Bye. Two lines available. Both of them are in Hillsboro. Damn. I forgot that I was going to force everybody to say something about TKN today. Oh, well, well, well we've got ten minutes left. Everybody has to say something about TKN, and then they can talk about whatever they want. Nine nine zero nine three five two in Hillsboro. Back to the phones we go. La Manguera and Ybor. La, how you doing? Hello. Hello. Peter Bo. Peter Bo. M- M- Mr. Who? Bobito. Lassiter. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yo soy La Manguera. Oh, La Manguera. You've never called my show before. No, I never have before. I want to talk about something. Yeah. I want to talk about Cuban sandwiches. Cuban sandwiches. Well, you have to say something about WTKN first. TKN, hijo de puta. Whoa. Now, I want to tell you about, I don't know nothing about TKN. I don't listen. I don't like it, nobody. I think he, how you say in English, TKN is soccer. <laughs> yeah, that's how you say it in English. Soccer. <laughs> soccer. As a matter of fact, you'd say that in any language. Soak in the, the, the room, whatever. I don't like it. I can't find in my car no, the radio. You don't pick up it. 57. Mm-hmm. So I don't know nothing about it. Well, there's a lot of radios in this market that can't pick up TKN. Do you ever listen to... Hardly any of them. Uh, to who? Spanish radio. Spanish radio? No, I don't. It's very good. I watch Spanish television, though. I enjoy Spanish no, television. No. Do you watch it sing? Uh, Canel City? Fifty, sing. Uh, I, I don't understand. Me too. Listen, have you ever had... I know is this before. Cleveland Wheeler? Okay. Are you Cleveland Wheeler? No, Cleveland Wheeler is a paquete. He's a jode, jode. He's a tolete. Q105 is soccer too. Everybody, soccer. Q105 is not like it. Q105 is made fun of the Spanish people. Yes, Q105 they do. Q105 is made fun of the... The black people, the negro. Q105 make fun of the fat people. I go gordo. And I, 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 I know you are gordo, but you try very much to not be gordo. To make it funny people because of the fat is no good. People can help you be fat. People, too many people fat it make them very sad. To make fun of the fat people and the black people. And it's the, not nice. It's not nice at all. No. Do you like a Cuban sandwich? Ah, uh, yes, I do. Do you go to many? I know you do the Nutris, Nutris Sweet. No, Nutrisystem. I've been back on Nutrisystem for about three weeks now. No, hold on. Yeah. You lose weight or something? Yes, I am losing weight. How much are you losing? Uh, ten pounds the first two weeks. For two weeks? Ten pounds? Yep. My God. How much it costs it to do this? Is it good food or what? Is it powder? Powder and water? No, no, it's not powdered food. <laughs> it's not powdered food. The I food... tried the powdered food one time. Oh, no. It no, tastes no, no, like no, no. mierda. I don't like it. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. How how much weight do you want to lose? Sir? How much weight do I want to lose? Probably really? about 100 pounds. 100? No, yeah. come on, really. How much? I'm serious. About 100 pounds. No, no. What do you Keep on getting 100 pounds? Yeah. How much do you weigh? How much do I weigh? About as much as, you know, somebody's grandmother. But a Cleveland Wheeler mother. <laughs> yeah. I've, done, Wheeler. I've, never, I've, never, I've never met Mrs. Wheeler. I Cleveland know. Wheeler is a mother. It is mother, everybody. You know one time, years ago, 
when I come to the country from Mariel in 1980, I don't speak English so good. I speak it very good now, but when I got here, I don't know nothing. Uh -huh. So I listen to the... Also, probably, you're, you're apparently not very good with a compass either. Most of the people landed in Key West, and you, you landed up here in Tampa? No, too many Cubans. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, do you know about Mariel? Uh, yes, I do. I was on a boat with a guy who was crazy. And I say, no way I'm going to go to the crazy people in but, Miami. Did, did, do, you mean, do you mean to tell me Obarski came over? In the, in the... Obarski. Obarki. Oh, the, the, the manager of the 57. Right, right. How oh, you say Obarki? Obarki, yes. Obarki. Obarki. Obarki the wrong tree. I'll bet he's Obarki in today, too. This is what we call... Hope you guys manager. remember to turn over the tape for God's sake. Yeah? You know, sometimes I think that everybody wants to make it a criminal pay. Capital punishment, he, he yelled. I see. I'm not such a stupid. The idea of making criminals pay is beyond belief. If they had money to start with, they wouldn't be criminals. That's right. But listen, Bobito, what I think is to make the guy never do the crime again, I think you should make the guy go into a room and put his headphones on and listen to TKN. Oh! And he never do it again. Oh, you cruel, vicious man! I don't... Get off my phone! That's the worst thing I've ever heard! Jim in Clearwater. Jim, you're on the air at WFLA. Hello? Hello, Hello Jim. I, I don't think I have time to talk about what I wanted to talk about, but I, I do have four minutes. to say about uh, Plop. Uh-huh. I heard, uh, I probably heard your first show down here. It was back in Harry D. Cup days, I think. Uh, yes, I, my yeah, first show was sitting in for uh, Harry. He was away on vacation. Yeah, and you, and you talked about, I think that day you talked about uh, little old ladies in the condos with blue hair eating run, run bonbons. Well, and I was David Fowler's uh, shtick. Well, do you, didn't you have that too? No. Oh, well, I thought you, anyway, I thought it was you. No, my, my shtick is brain damaged snowbirds. Run bonbons uh, with Fowler's. Are you sure? Positive. I could have swore. Well, anyway, what I wanted to say was when I heard you that first day, I had a feeling that talk radio was going to kind of take a turnaround. And as it turned out, it did. Uh, quite a bit. Y'all yeah, talk's a lot different than it was when I came here. And it's probably... Do you think uh, that station is going to uh, change owners again? Or are they going to go to music or what? I have no idea what they're going to do. They're in a very awkward position. You have some very high-priced executive types who thought this was the thing to do. As a general rule of thumb, when you change format, of course you... And I, they didn't really change format, they changed direction within a format. As a general rule of thumb, when you make a major change, you can anticipate a considerable drop in whatever ratings that you had in the first book. So as a general rule of thumb, you would wait two or three books before you made such a determination. A book is a three-month period of time. Uh, in this particular case, it is such a disaster that reasonable people would say, uh-oh, this ain't going to get better. It's not going to get, you know, you, know you, you don't go from a point two to sellable, reasonable numbers like, you know, a four, a five, a six, a seven, a ten. You, you, you just don't do that. It, it's not done. However, we've got all of these people that said, this is the thing to do. Big, high-powered, high-priced people who are now probably going to be very pig-headed and stick with it. They went uh, non-controversial, basically, right? They they just went bland, man. Let, let me ask you one quick question. Do you think if they if they would have stayed controversial, do you think Richard Shanks could have ever competed with you? Because he was basically kind of crazy if he would have had his head. Well, Shanks, Shanks was uh, trapped in talk radio and a talk radio mentality of five, six, seven, ten years ago, and Shanks would never probably have up against me done any better than he was doing because I had a head start. I was here deeply entrenched. Uh, Shanks... But he did have his bun exposure. On, on, I mean, that was quite... That was national, apparently. He yeah, I heard about, about that. Every time I've ever heard him, I heard about that. I know. He'd had to talk about it. I, that was, he was pushing himself, right? But he did He did have the chutzpah to do that. I mean, that, that, was, that made national uh, coverage. Well, it was probably a slow news day. Oh, you think so? Maybe. Well, anyway. Yeah, that's not a slam at Shanks, but you know, normally it's not national news. Okay. 
I hope I hope you get some competition, though. I wouldn't mind it. I'd, I'd actually, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. I know you. you would. You said that before. All right. Thank you. Be good, Jim. All the rest of you guys be good, too. And we'll do it again tomorrow at noon. Behave yourselves.